Let's leave that. I've got the chat ready. Oh, I forgot to do that. Right, off we go, I guess. It is 13.09, so we want to finish at 1.09 a.m. in the morning. Let's just write that down, shall we? So I don't forget. It's 12 hours from now. Um, let's spam that link around on Skype. What's this? Oh, okay then. Okay, let's see. How's this looking? Wonderful. I'll probably get rid of that now. And well, I think we should be all good to go. I've no idea if anyone's watching yet, but... But... We're going to start anyway. Right. 12 hours. One minute's gone already. Let's not waste any more time. So, the game in Stellar Voyage. It's been a while, obviously, since this was last seen on a live stream or a video or anything. Uh, progress has been quite slow. Um, actually, it's now running in this much bigger uh, window now, which is probably partially concealed by the webcam, so you can't see the top right corner. But oh dear, yeah, frame rate is starting to drop now because I've made it so big. I might actually temporarily. Temp <laughs> My string class doing the crash yesterday. Uh, right, I'm going to temporarily reduce it back to its original size for this stream for performance issues obviously let's have a look at that yeah that's much more stable that's running at about 200 fps instead of 50 and uh, yeah let's um what actually have I done I can't remember what state the game was at in the last live stream oh you will have seen all the GUI stuff the menu and everything just then which I've now implemented and all that. Um, and also, just to give a bit of background to the first thing we'll be working on, let me know if that didn't. Oh. That's weird. Start trying to focus on one of them little pop up things. Anyway, uh, you'll notice we've now got a little carrot down here. So if I type a load of stuff, I can actually go back now and insert new characters within it. It just makes handling the uh, input of these a lot nicer. Uh, what I want to do next is... Basically, like if you enter that, you can press the up arrow and you get it again. So you can type it again if you need to. Um, that's what we're doing. Hmm. Oh, fancy that. Oh, that's not brilliant. Unavailable. String P. <laughs> What's this actually doing? Backspace. Oh no, that's actually type. I'm not, I'm not even doing this. Oh, I think I know what that is. Yeah, yeah, I got it. It's because the carrot is... Let's just head on down to the exit thing. 
that's that simple back to there, but what I need to do is sour the carrot back to zero because it's still hanging out where it used to be off the edge of the thing. Probably have some sort of reset method, but oh well, we only really save a couple of lines of code. Right. Obviously, what was going on there? I was typing all that. Exit out of it. Yeah, and then I'll still come back to it. Okay. No problem is when I'm exiting the. Uh, This it just goes straight through to the pause menu. Guess escape does both those things, which is interesting. So we can get rid of some of these. We don't need font or sprites. But we don't need player. Actually, maybe I do. I don't know. <coughs> I had something like this once before I deleted it thinking I wouldn't need it, but apparently I do. That'll be false by default, basically. If esc cooldown esc cooldown looks false. Actually, that'll be brackets. Oh, are you still running that? <laughs> Just probably terminated it. Yeah. Which basically gives us a way of saying, well, basically say exit. I'll say key dot. What do we call it? S called out equals true. And then, in the level where it does pause. Oh, actually, no, maybe I do need the play for this. Yeah, because the actual controls are in player, aren't they? Uh, where's that going to be? Player, no, but the top. So, uh. Escape and not key dot escape cool now. Right, let's try that again. So type all that. And we escape, yeah, and then we can press it again to get to it. Okay, that's that sorted. I mean, it really should. It was, it was basically. A, I, I thought I didn't need this. Apparently, I do need it, but it doesn't have to be in the ridiculous place it was before. This makes a lot more sense keeping it within the actual keyboard class, which is getting a bit of a mess. I probably need to organise it at some point. Right now, shall we actually get back to the task at hand? What we need is well, first, obviously, what we're going to need is. Uh, what I said was, like if you type that and you press up and you can get that message again to basically spam that as many times as you need to. So to do that I need to get the arrow keys able to actually handle that, so let's do that. Well, I copied and pasted, but then I didn't actually paste. So, oh. 
it's better be as exciting as ESL. I don't know what ESL is. What is ESL? Some sort of esports thing. This needs a much better system. Yeah, you sports, I thought so. Oh, game's gone. Be able to access those keys. Uh, what else? Okay. A list of strings, which will be our input history. That will, of course, be an array list. So that's going to be our input history. Every time you hit enter and send some input off to the interpreter, it will store this input and then you can reaccess it later. So, where do we want to do that? Where's enter? Append, actually. No, no, because append is used by anything that adds text. So, we'll do something like. Uh, text history dot add is it actually quite good quality I'm not I'm not sure um, I guess because there's not much moving you can just basically compress a load of stuff like if this was in a game I reckon it'd probably be worse quality if they have uh, you'll see like artifacting and stuff in games where they're just moving more, I guess. It's not probably even called text history, input history, that's why. I've got one called my fields already. Input history dot add. The input. I don't know what we'll say is if. We'll basically want maximum size here, so if input history dot size. Is greater than what shall we say? For maximum size is maybe 20 inputs. Then we will say input history dot. It's got to move, I think, isn't it? Um, this little bit input history dot get zero, which will be the first object in that history so for one that was oldest. Now that should be saving those into the input history now. Now we just need a way of accessing it so that's what we'll do. We'll say uh, well I guess if you can read the text that's quite useful. Uh, I'm going to create an integer for our position up and down in that history when you're cycling through them. Um, call that uh, IH pause. We'll so set equal to zero by default. And 
and well that's basically our index within this uh, list of strings so typing up will increase that so you go old no no wait that's not right uh... okay you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna say here that the I H pos equals input is straight dot size. Oh, my phone's beeping. I have an email. Hetch Live is now follow you on Twitch. Good one. Okay. So I'll set that to whatever that is. And then I can just have up to go older. Uh, well, we'll put this particular important right about here, I think. So if key dot typed up, and well, we need some slot condition to stop us going too far, and I age pause is greater than zero. That's a loud vehicle outside. I don't know if that. Registered on the mic. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to say IH pause equals um, no minus no yeah minus minus it'll decrease by one. And then we'll say now just go backwards if you type down. Oh no no, we need to do more than that. We need to say input. So that's just moving an arbitrary number up and down. We need to actually so our current input will equal input history dot get at IH pause. Do the same here, only backwards. And then, uh, well, let's see what we've got right now. Before we go any further, let's see how broken it is currently. So we type that. I press up, I get that again. I press down and it crashes, so uh, yeah. Needs a bit of handling of that yet. Yeah. Oh, I didn't actually catch that yet. Yeah. And IH pause. That needs to be less than in put his straight dot size, I think. you go. Failed instance of the game. Right, let's have another look. So we type that. Up gets that. Down on it still crashes. <laughs> yeah, it's still there. Um, the position is one. Size is on uh, uh, minus one. Let's see what that does. can't actually get rid of it and you can't backspace it unless you do that oh I just thought of something usually when you do that you press up your carrot will be at the end I think won't it so what I'll do is when we actually do that 
if I can find it anyway. Yeah, right here, I will set the display dot current position to be equal to input dot length. So it basically gets moved along right to the end, and let's do the same thing there. Let's laser copy and paste it and uh, delete it again. I think it's Control D it deletes a line. It's right next to Control S. Right, let's have a look now. So you do that. Press forward, and that's out the end. Lovely. So now I'll just, I'll just make sure this works for the whole thing, I guess. Yeah, I'm cycling through them all now. It does seem to work going both ways. I don't think it's perfect, but I'm not actually sure how it would work perfectly. I'll, I'll have to, like, look at, like, command line and stuff. Because obviously all this typing stuff, it needs to be as close as possible to, like, it would be on a real computer that we're used to using, so otherwise it doesn't feel right. And you wouldn't think so, but even simple things like the lack of a carrot, which I added last night, they do make a difference. Um, and you'll notice as well, when the carrot moves, it's always on. Oh, I'll see you in a bit, Mega. Um, when the carrot's moving, it's always on. It doesn't flicker like it does when it's just stood there. And you notice that as well, you don't notice it normally, but when it's not there, you do notice it. So it really is uh, trying to get it as close to an actual typing system as possible. But that's okay for now, I think. Um, we can move on to more exciting things, I think, as well. Um, I've got a whole bunch of notes, basically. Um, don't know how well these will show up on the webcam. So a whole bunch of notes and stuff. Um, like for here, well that was my dose on key input and GUI, so I think we're kind of done with that. Um, here I've got a bit of a to-do list. Uh, okay, entity loading and level changing seems to be a big thing here. There's a few things that have been written down to improve, but I don't know like how they actually need improving. So I'm going to need to take a look at them and figure out what's wrong first. Because I made these notes about two months ago. Um, so. So. We need a way of loading entities to do specific things. Or something along those lines. I might need to jot a few things down here to be fair uh, well no first let's take a look at what we've got currently currently we're going to here and we're going to land on the planet outside and then we're going to head on down to the old airlock and head outside onto the planet's surface. Of course, you can actually walk all the way around up here. And that's a window from the control room. And there's all these rocks and stuff that you can collide with, and that's all just generally very good. But actually explored this properly. This is all I generated this myself in Paint.net with a special file. I just basically scattered these everywhere. Kind of nice to see all the stuff that I left. Because this was about three months ago. I made the actual level out there. So I think I was still doing my exams at the time. Right. Um, obviously, this isn't very versatile, it only works with one airlock recurrent system. And I need a nice way of linking these airlocks to a proper change of levels or something shall we check twitter take, <laughs> take a quick break or something oh wow are we we're just over 20 minutes in 
That's like 11 hours and 40 minutes, we can do this easily. Easily. Do a bit of planning here because I've got no idea how I'm actually going to tackle this issue. Let's just have a look at this. Here's some notes constructor used for ship level because airlock depends on current location. It must not be used anywhere other than ship. Alright, that's probably all the problem is there. <sighs> right. Let's make some notes. You know what? So you can actually see what's going on. Let's fire up paint.net. Actually, no, that'll be slower for the live stream, probably. I might just use paint. MS Paint. Yeah, because paint.net is apparently taking a long time to fire up. <laughs> yeah, let's let's get shut of that for now. Oh, you can't see the chat anymore now. Also, this image is for some reason absolutely huge. Look at it. It's like 1300. I don't need it that big. Right. Let's move that over to the same space as this so we can still see chat. And we'll just make that to the same size as that. Right, so. What have we got? We've got different levels which will be represented with these boxes. So let's just say that's for ship. This is the planet's surface. We're very good at doing this, apparently. And this could be, say, a base on the planet's surface which you can enter. And what there is within the ship is certain points at which you can enter different levels. As in an airlock. And these will correspond to certain places within here. So that will will go to that one. That one will go to that one. Say so we've got another airlock here, and there could be an airlock on the surface here, and that leads into the base level. And basically, how that works currently is you walk up to the airlock, you press E, and you get changed into a new level. So how are we actually going to handle this? How does each airlock know which airlock here is supposed to lead to, and so on? Or we could use some sort of ID system, I guess. So we have airlock 1, and then this here is airlock 1, and it says, alright, when you go into airlock 1, find airlock 1 on this one, and so forth. 2. 2, even, that's a bit better. 2. So something like that, and maybe 3. The only problem is. What if we got some sort of numbering issue where there's multiple level one, multiple airlock ones, and it's like, okay, which one are we actually going to connect to, and so forth? So yeah, I think we're going to need some sort of ID system, some way of making sure that the IDs don't clash with each other and such. Hmm. So I would think then that maybe these are, when when do these IDs actually get generated? Because the ship is kind of dynamic; it can land on the surface and then it can take off and you know disappear again. 
and these links will only be established once it's landed on the surface whereas these will always pretty much be here now I do have code for when you actually land the ship and it does populate the ship's exterior onto the surface it isn't actually normally there This isn't normally the point where I take a break for an hour and look at Twitter. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. That's a rough sketch of what we want. The question is, how do we actually go about doing this? Well, well, public int ID. Well, I guess that's somewhere to start. So, how about this? Each Maybe we could generate some sort of UUID so that we're all unique as well. That would be interesting. Yeah. Some sort of UUID, yeah, that could work. Oh, the only problem is I've got no idea how to actually do that. So, yeah. So, what's going to happen is when the entities get loaded, if it finds an airlock, it'll assign an ID to it. It will then, when, it, when the ship lands on the planet's surface, say, Okay, now we'll map these to airlocks on the surface so that each one leads into the right place in the ship. And then... Oh, no, that's a start, isn't it? So I do want to be able to deal with multiple airlocks currently. If I, think I, tried, if I, do, if I tried doing that now, it would be very broken. <sighs> Public int ID. I wonder if anyone's watching. Might not actually be anyone watching at the moment. What I think I'll do is we'll try and get this system of IDs with the entities working, and then then we'll head on over to uh, maybe a game for a bit. Take a bit of a break from the coding for a while. Don't know what we'll play. Yeah. Ooh. Gap, uh, anyway, now thinking here. Yeah. Right, where's our current handling of floating entities? Okay, here we are, look. Else if, tiles, x and y times width, blah blah blah. Add entity, yeah. So we add an, an airlock. It gives me an idea, because obviously each level has its own separate... Uh, has its own separate class, so in those class we could say, alright, in this level, airlock 1 will lead to this other level, airlock 2 will lead to this other level, and so forth. 
all we need to know is with the order in which I'm actually going to generate these. So, what I'm going to say is we have somewhere. How about here? Uh, I'll just make it public for now. Public int uh, IDs. Which is the number of IDs that have been issued, and it'll be set to zero. And what happens is, right, well, now we need to head over to our actual airlock here and say, alright, int ID. And then this dot ID equals ID. This isn't going to work, is it? Right, okay. Um, this IDs thing needs to be global. It needs to be part of the game and not the specific level. So, we'll say something like public int airlock IDs. So I see a problem here. Um, I'll just say public int get uh, lock IDs, which will just return uh, lock IDs. Yeah, but I still need the game for that, don't I? Which I don't actually have. At least I don't think so. No, that only happens when you use init. Which is probably a bad idea, but oh well. Actually, no, it still won't work. This can't be cl Okay, no, yeah, no, 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 this won't work either. This will not work. No. What am I thinking? I mean... That. To hell with that. No, these do need to have their own local IDs. Possibly.
I believe we must do ID plus plus here. Oh no, no, what am I thinking? So that will actually increase IDs as well as actually using it for that specific airlock. Now. The problem is, I believe, the ship over in this class does things slightly differently. Maybe. Hmm, that's weird. Oh yeah, that's because I was down there, wasn't it? Okay, that could work. That's already sort of implemented. There's going to be a lot of this in this live stream, by the way. Just me thinking because I didn't think this through and like I say there might not even be anyone watching it all right now but you know still forces me to be productive at the end of the day so yeah uh, I just do a lot of staring at the code blankly you know Right, maybe we just need to plan this out in more detail. So, we've got an airlock. Shall we say? In a level. We'll just say, so let's start at the edge of a level and you go up to it. And... This needs to be somehow mapped to an airlock in another level. Now... I think the angle at which you approach the elk does have does need to have an effect. For example, if you click on the south side of an airlock, when you emerge in the next level, you'll be on the north side. So what we need is some sort of I don't know, some sort of integer which says which represents north, east, south, and west, maybe, and then it will just be the opposite, depending on which way. So if we say that's airlock free, and in that level, then free can be made to go to airlock four. So level two, shall we say? This is practically unreadable. Two airlock 4 and it will also send that direction it looks like a five year old's writing <laughs> but yeah that's basically what I'm looking for so how are we actually going to do that well
what I need to take into consideration is how this actually will work when a ship lands on the surface of a planet, because that's currently the only way in which these airlocks interact anyway. Uh, so, let's just say. Um, There's your planet's surface, and your ship comes and lands on it, and inside it, that's got airlocks. So let's just say that's airlock 1, and that's airlock 2, and so forth. Oh, hello again. So if thing is if we say that's already got like this might this this planet surface might already have like airlock one and stuff so so when the ship lands we need to add more airlocks to represent the different ways in which you can access this newly landed spaceship. It needs to be handled rather dynamically, I would think. Text, yeah, I can't be bothered, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have to, I have to reach up here, I have to type it all out, and then if I want to get more stuff, I have to go and find brush tool, don't I? So, you know, it's only meant to be a quick thing. I mean, normally I'd write it down on paper, but I just want to be able to show you folk. Actually, it might just be one of you at the moment, I don't know. Is there anyone else actually watching right now besides Aiden? Because I have no idea. Hmm. I think this needs its own. I think it's keeping track of that. What this needs is <coughs> it needs its own ID and it needs the level that it needs to point to, and it needs the ID of the airlock within the level which it needs to point to. I'm, po I'm like pointing at the screen like you can actually see. That's the screen. Um, so, we need to play around with the constructor over here, I think. So, what we're going to say is this needs an int ID. And, and we'll have another one, int um, dest id for destination id so you make the airlock as its x and y position in a level, it has its own id it has a level which the airlock will point to and the id of an airlock within that level where you will actually appear when you go through it that's a general idea So what we want to do here is IDs plus plus again. Maybe. The only thing is we need a way of checking that the airlocks here are the ones we actually want because there might be airlocks within the ship which lead to different parts of the ship and 
basically everything would end up out of sync, so... All it says, int dest id. Oh, and like I said here, we do need something else which will be int dest ids. Which is enough that we've had from that level. Okay. At the moment, it's boring here talking about this stream because you'd be quite right, to be fair. Like I say, so when I'm done with this, I'll probably. Like, you wouldn't hear when I said this, but when I'm doing this, I'll probably play some games. As you know, working all day is, uh, isn't always too fun. Level that being the level that we're going to dot entities dot size. Oh wait, no, what am I doing? Int i equals zero. I forgot how to for loop. While i is less than that. And i plus plus. If level dot and no 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 entities dot get this i is an airlock so I'll allow us to single out those Um, do we have something here? Okay. I think Leeds United just scored. I um, <laughs> don't know if you can hear that either, but yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, we just need to return the uh, public level leads. Uh, destination armor. And we'll just return. The level which it leads to. Which is conveniently right up there. So then what we say is, well if. Level dot. Entities dot get the tie dot Oh we need to now cast this, hold on. Airlock A equals Airlock Level dot entities dot get that's all right. Well, it actually works, does it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that was it. I meant to be sweet and sour. It tastes like boiled water. I don't know. I don't eat noodles. But. Hmm. Okay, so if a dot destination 
equals equals this, so it's actually leading to where we are, then... I doubt this is going to work first time I run this, this is bloody crazy. This is a proper algorithm, this is. Ugh, what am I getting myself into with this? Um, I can hardly even concentrate on this. I can, I'm starting to get tempted to just go and play a game now, because it's just... Ah yes, good old England. England's green and pleasant land. Man, I hope more people turn up. <laughs> I wouldn't blame them if they didn't. I don't know. I mean, it's 2 p.m. Most people seem to be like around in the evening, I guess. Particularly the Americans, because they're all at school now. They're starting school again in America. Although in Central Time, school won't even have started yet. It'll only be eight o'clock over there. Anyway, back to this. Uh, guest. I these. Wait, hold on. What was I doing? Did I not already create a thing for this? Because I can't find it. Apparently not. Right, okay, int guest for destination, obviously. Might not even need that to be honest. Um mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Know what I can just do. Move that up to there. I don't think we have uh, fiber optic here yet. I'm still running with uh, quite slow. No, it's all right. Obviously, it's live stream seems to be working fine from what I hear. So, and so the uploads reasonable enough. But yeah, it's not great. I've got about 15 down and 0 0.8 up. Which I'm surprised is enough to actually live stream, but like I commented earlier, when nothing's moving, it can compress things a lot more. It's very clever technology behind it. Okay, what was I about to do? Yeah. Um, Actually, no, I think I was alright to do that. What just needed to happen was... Maybe just replace that. No, 
no, no, no, no, no, no. Never in a million years. That's not how we do it. That is not how it works at all. Wait. Wait, 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 no. Only, yeah. Mm. Ugh. I'll see. Right, I figured out what needs to go in here. I think this would want to be A dot ID. I'm just going to say break, so I don't want to keep going through this, this loop. And add in tons of airlocks, wherever he finds one. This is really doing my edit. However, we're an hour in, 11 hours to go. Let's tweet that, shall we? Um, have to do it on the phone. No, I don't want to add a location to my tweets. Really creepy. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> can't actually, uh... Actually, shall we see if I can tweet, I think. Well, for starters, obviously, wants to capitalise HTTP, and I misspell HTTP. That and that and that www dot twitch links are shortened automatically, that's good. Yep, twitch dot t no 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 dot tv slash oh no it's capitalized TV, you don't want to do that. T V. Well, let's put a gap there now. Slash A B animation L T D. Is that right? Twitch dot TV slash A B animation. Looks about right. Oh, what's it done? Go back the right way up. It's a tweet. Knocks the microphone. There we go. Probably an easier way of doing that, but you know. You know. <sighs> so we've been working for an hour. Shall we take a break? And play some games for a bit? Because this is just doing my editing, like I said. I need to sort of clear my head a little bit in terms of this. Right. Can forget that. Exit Eclipse. Yep, save changes. Here we are back on the old desktop. So, oh, webcam went off. Um, let's just have a look as a game to play, I guess. Game that we did once play in a live stream a long time ago, we haven't really done much of it since. What we are going to do is play the old game of GeoGuessr. How does that look? Yeah, that looks fine. Well, let's just bring that up a bit there, shall we? 
There we go. Uh, the game where let's just tweet this out. You get put somewhere in the world in Google Maps and you have to try and figure out where you are. Right, let's play, I guess. Right then, where's this? I haven't played this in a while, but... A bit laggy, isn't it? Mm, could be vaguely European. Let's take a bit of a look around. Uh, okay, here's a sign. Very good. Oh, this looks slightly French, if I do say so. Yeah, so that does look quite French indeed. Grossia et Cimetière. And that's just brilliant. Get my French GCSE results next week. Oh, bigger sign. Very good. Oh, I can't actually see it. I keep flicking past the damn thing. Can I zoom in? Yes. Yeah, Grossa Le Borg. Neri Eglise du XP. Cicel. Cimetière. Group Scullies. Windows has detected your computer's performance is slow. Wow. Fancy that. Right, so we know we're in France. However, I've got no idea <laughs> any more specific than that. That's the one that's in capitals. Grosse Le Bois. So we'll tr maybe try and head along there. Because that seems to be a main road. Maybe we'll see signs leading to a bigger town that will allow us to identify where we are. Because I do know. Have you ever ended up anywhere you recognise instantly in GeoGuessr? No, I haven't. I haven't really played it that much though lately. But No, I, ne I never have. I sometimes fear that I will, like, doing a live stream and I just, like, turn up at my house and it's just like, great, now you all know where I live. But that is extremely unlikely. I guess if it actually happened, I'd just have to, like, pretend I don't recognise it or something. Yeah, it is quite, quite addictive. Quite a nice, fun little thing to play. Works well with live streams, I think. Still though. Oh, but I just bit for French thing. Huh. A stop doesn't mean anything different. However, a junction. Oh, that looks like a big blue sign. That's always good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, 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 road number. They're always very useful. Looks like A404, maybe? Yeah, A404. Cross the bog. Okay, what about this? A four oh four motorway, yeah. Belignat Oyanax. Well, I've got no idea where the A four oh four might be. Four oh four, you know. Anyway, oh, hold on, hold on a minute. They're all E roads in France. Like, look, E sixty. What's an A road? Are these little ones in between? Oh yeah, they are. Wait, well, they're all just sort of over. Oh no, E are European Union roads, aren't they? But France still has their own ones. Right, it's so looking for A four oh four. That's Paris. 
Ah, uh, that's A4. So maybe one of these branching off here. Right, what's this? Then? Oh, they're D roads. A4. Still the A4. I think mean, that's a border into Germany, isn't it? Yeah, so it won't be the same there. I mean, I'm assuming that the numbering system works similar to, like, in the UK. Where it sort of goes from London, obviously M1 goes directly up north, you've got M2 going southeast, M3 going, I think, vaguely southwestish, M4 heading over to Wales, and the M5 running up from southwest up to around Birmingham, the M6 running from around... Birmingham route to Manchester, they all sort of correspond to a geographic area and they all sort of branch off from it, so okay, A404 their A1 goes that way, and A1, A1 A11 A10, A6 A5, oh no, so they don't follow that same kind of system I mean, what are they called like in the south? Oh, that's like A7. Huh. I still think that this to the west of Paris is the best. Best we've had yet. It's A2. Oh, oh, oh. A43. Oh, no, N. God damn it. A404. Weird. Wait. Maybe we're in Belgium. What are they called in Belgium? Let's have a look up there. This is Belgium right here, isn't it? What are their roads called? Oh, they're still A roads, look. A. That's a bit of a long shot, really. That's Netherlands. Mm. Looking unlikely. Brussels. Oh, there's an A4. Still an A4. We're still in Belgium, aren't we? Oh, oh I suddenly clicked that, I guess. Bloody N roads of all things, all right? Um, well, let's let's try somewhere completely different. How about all the way over in the southwest? A sixty four, A sixty five, A sixty three. Okay, maybe not. How about? Up a bit further north, maybe. A83, how many of these do they have? A87? A11? No, I don't have eight roads in this corner of France. I've still not seen it. Grossier. <gasps> what if we're in... No, we won't be in Canada, will we? <laughs> no. I was going to say, like, French-speaking Canada, but then they'd have English signs as well. Oh, look, there's, a little, there's that little map on the side of there. She would be more accurate. Ah, you know what? This is heading towards that motorway, isn't it? A404. So when we reach that motorway, maybe we'll actually see. Oh, this looks good. Look at this, like roundabout or something. On, on the right there.
Oh, 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 oh. Geneva. Leon. Okay, right, okay. That's very, very good. We know where Geneva is. That is right around here. Oh, yeah, this is looking better already. A42, A41. A four three two. So Borg on Bress. That's one of the places I think. Borg, Leon, and Geneva. So we're somewhere in this region. A4, so maybe it's a trunk road. A404, there it is, look. A404, okay, found the road. That's. Groysia. So. Where was it we started again? I think there's a thing that lets you go back to. Yeah, return to start. Which was here. And where did we go again? We went along here, didn't we? And we found that sign. We'll try and get back to that point. What was the first place name sign we actually saw? Right, well, some sort of crossroads with roads for... Yeah. Actually, no, no, no. There was something else, wasn't there? Back, back the way we can. I went the other way the first time, and found some other signs. Uh, we went this way, right? Did we not? Yeah, these signs here, right? Wherever was a sign for Grossier and Cintier, that's what I'm looking for right now. Oh, that place is not be very big. At this point, I almost just want to put something down and see what we get. And that leads to it as well. But that leads to it, and... That leads to it, and... Well, we never actually got on the A404, did we? Like, what if I'm all the way down here or something? Okay, let's head back. This is getting confusing now. Oh, you're yeah, I have seen that. Just trying to get it perfect at this point. I'm probably not going to get it any better than this. Around about here. I'm just obsessed with trying to get it spot on right now. Let's go back. See if we can find that particular junction again. VA404. Oh, I see you, Mega. Just leave me here. Yeah, 
Let's head back to that bit again. And I need to start trying to triangulate my position, I think. So because at this point, I think this is kind of unnecessary, you know. I get quite a high score just from isolating out this particular area, but... I don't know, I want, to, I want this to be perfect right now. You know? Right, here we are at that sign again, let's go back one. Oh, well, that's great, isn't it? So we've got this roundabout. One way is for Lyon and Borg and Geneve and Asseni. This way. Okay, this is good. This is very good. Beligna, Matigna. Okay. Me, <coughs> 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 me. Matigna. D11. Is that what this is? No, it's not. But D11 is actually this. So, we are at where the D11 crosses the A thingy. No. Wait, so it's... No, that's that way. Let's continue looking, shall we? That's just some random country road which you can't actually go down. What does it say for going back the way we came, maybe? Came from D11 Grossia Le Borg. Okay, so we're saying we came from this way, right? Yeah, because that, oh yeah, yeah. We went around that roundabout, that'll be that way. Okay, this is the roundabout we're wrong. We came from this way, but. I reckon. But we would have come from around about maybe here. No, say, mm, say about there. Unless there's anything else that looks more viable. Not really. Nah, no. Let's make guess. See how close we are. Two hundred fifty-six meters away. It was actually there. Oh, I thought it might be there. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Very, very close. I doubt we're going to be as lucky with this one, though, because this just looks like middle of bloody nowhere. Yup. Great. Looks a bit like Australia, doesn't it? They have those uh, orange things on the ground. Yeah, I have bad memories of playing this game getting spawned in Australia. And it turns out you're actually in like Canada or whatever. Oh, spinning around here. I'm gonna look for a short while, I don't see a sign, I'm just gonna guess somewhere on Australia because I really can't be bothered just clicking for miles and miles. You know, the fact is, with what we were just at, we knew it was 
possible to get a good high score if we just kept narrowing it down. But, uh, it's probably not going to happen with this one. I mean, Australia's huge. I mean, just look at this, it's just a straight road going into the middle of nowhere. Come on, let's... This crossroads, so we'll have some signs. That better not be like a location sign, just blurt it out. No, there's literally no indication of what this actually. It's blurry to read that. Oh, I've got literally no idea. <laughs> this could be anywhere. I'm pretty sure it's Australia, but still, this could really be anywhere. A few houses and stuff. I don't know, that looks oddly well too forested for Australia. But I don't think anywhere else they have those yellow double lines there. That looks an awful lot like an American school bus, though. Um, so, maybe we are in the States. Like, could it be like somewhere like Kansas or something? Or, ooh, I don't know. Why is it so blurry? Ugh. Oh. Like some backwater part of it. Some backwater part of USA, like Montana or something. JCT 543. That's not very helpful. Oh, what's this? There's a rose leading all over the shop here. 543. Five, 543. Well, all roads seem to lead to this 543 place, so maybe we should follow that and we'll actually get onto a major road. Oh, what does it say going on this way? It just says stop. So, Route 543 in either Australia or. Oh god, now we're going really slowly, what the hell? Come on. looks too nice and developed to be Australia. <laughs> I'm just assuming Australia's one giant desert. America is mostly one giant desert. Well, maybe not. Like, half of it is. Or was. No, it's just covered in farms. Well, it used to be quite a big desert. Sure as hell not Arizona, anyway. I mean, look at this. Look at this. I've like, got farm animals here. There's too many trees for this to be Australia. Uh, I'm really starting to think of USA now. We just have to find Route 543. Whatever that may be. I just gotta find a place name. Even better would be. There's some markings on that truck. No, it's all too blood to read. No, I'm really starting to think America for this one. Why's the camera moving so slowly? I'm not getting anywhere here. Yeah?
Yeah, they've even got like the American style like letterboxes and stuff. Okay, I'm not particularly willing to just keep following this trail so much longer. I'm just gonna uh, see if this leads us to anything. But no, now it's really starting to become the middle of nowhere now, isn't it? Okay. What sort of route numberings do they have in 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 Australia? They all have like A and B, don't they? By the looks of it. They don't have ones that are just a number like they do in America. So that's a pretty strong indication that it's for states. I doubt it would be Canada. Yeah, I mean, it could just be like Dakota or something. 29, 680, 80, 76. But they're not linked to each other, that's the thing. Like, in America, I mean, in Britain, you've got, like, the, the M6, and coming off that, you've got the M60, the M62, and all that. Oh, that's not going to be that far west. Could be Montana, could be, like, Wyoming, Idaho. It's going to be Minnesota. Look at all these. There's hundreds of them. Which one even was it? It was 5, 4, 3, wasn't it? Right, I'm just going to put it right out there. See what we get. Oh, okay. It was in Kentucky. Wrong part of the USA, or well, at least it was in the right country. It was uh, right there. Oh, come on, I never have found that. I mean, there's no big cities and miles around. I ought to have gone all the way on to well, Louisville is the next one. Well, I was on five four three, so I'd presumably have ended up just going along. Through 68, and then I'd probably have seen a sign to Bellsville. I, even then, I'd never have found them, would I? It'd have been still very difficult. Next round. Oh, right, this looks more familiar already. This looks like Britain almost. Let's have a look. Probably right, Britain, I'm going to be well happy. That was proper British. -ish. Or not. Does look very Dutch though, to be fair. Nayu Wording S. So, assuming we're in the Netherlands, we've got N391 and N366. But it's a very convenient place, isn't it? Stadskanaal, oh god. I'm gonna identify it amongst all these. So looking for N three nine. There's N three five, N three six. N three four. N three three. Why didn't I just see an N three? An N three six. I welcome an N three six six. So let's just follow this along. See what we get. That's it. That any of us. What are some of the other signs here? Where do they point to? Oh, 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 God. 
metal D twenty nine M three six six U seventy U seventy one what you roads? What? <laughs> oh, so yeah, N threes where there's an N three nine one, this place called Emmon. Am I still in the right country here? Because sometimes it's easy to drift. Yeah, I think that's a border. N6 has few. No, no, that's not what I'm looking for. N6, N2s, N8s, N3s. Oh, I'm looking for N3s, aren't we? N320. That's about it, though. Hmm, Martin was here. This would probably be a bit easier. Okay, this looks good. And 344 and 310. 305. Three oh seven There was a place that's sixty two miles away called Groningen. And I think it's sixty two miles away it's probably quite important. So I would imagine that would mean it might show up. Okay, and thirty one. N three five six and three six nine. Oh, that's only three away from ours. Yeah, I'm just checking these little white ones don't have head numbers as well, do they now? Yeah, that's a bit of this part of the country. Look, there's N three five eight, N three six one. Very close to our number. Maybe a bit further up here. N363. Go further along here. N360. N362. Sounds vaguely German, so it could well just be on the near the German border. To Appel, yeah, look, look, right, okay, good, 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 good. And 391, that's our road, one of them anyway. So there's Emmon. Emmon was left, so. N three six six N three nine one. This is presumably it. This roundabout here. Oh, I kind of went the wrong way into the roundabout, but the closest one yet. Five thousand maximum points. That is very very good indeed. Wait a second, what? This is round four? This is the exact same place. 
It is so, isn't it? Look. Sir Appel, Emmon. Oh, well, well done. Uh, the game has literally put me in the exact same spot twice. Uh, maybe this isn't as random as I thought. Great. That's a bit... Disappointing. That was up here, wasn't it? Wait, what? I think this is just a bit glitched. Because, yeah, that is actually the centre of the world. That's where the equator meets Greenwich, I think. Because if you go directly north from here... Oh, maybe not. That is weird. I definitely wasn't in the middle of the sea. What? Well, that's weird. The whole game glitch lost me a bunch of points. Well, this looks like Arizona for a uh, preliminary guess. Something like that. Maybe Nevada. Oh, actually, it's probably just Australia, knowing my luck. Probably go, yeah, Arizona. No, nope, it's not. Maybe it's Mexico. You know, like, Baja, California. Oh, my God. This is a freaking huge road. Oh, I'm never going to find any hints as to what this is. Look at it. This is the definitive middle of nowhere. I've never seen... A nowhere that's no that's more nowhere. This is our last round. We've got eleven thousand points already, which is pretty good. Hmm. Note to self, if a game ever puts you in the same place where you just were, assume that it's in the, in the middle of the sea off the coast of Africa, in reality. I'm just clicking, the road's moving, the hills aren't moving, this place is huge. Oh, look at it, I'm not getting anywhere. You could just be driving for hours here, you never see anything. Yeah, this is either the Australian Outback or like Arizona or something like that. This game seems to like Australia, so I would assume that it's the Australian Outback. That would be my brother on Skype with his own friends. Wow. Let's look at that. <laughs> it just goes off into the sunset. For eternity. Yeah, I'm thinking right in the middle of Australia. Oh, it might not be though. What if it's in USA? In like. Like. Like when I use base Utah, it could be in Utah or Arizona or New Mexico. You know, this sort of area. I can't make my mind up between Australia and America. <laughs> Unless I've seen some evidence one or the other. Oh, oh, oh. What sort of side road? It's the most interesting thing I've seen yet in this place. Come on, load up your pixels and stuff. 
There we go. No, no indication where that leads. Someone just decided to make a random path leading up into the mountains. Maybe it's like a hiking route or something. I don't know. Oh, you can just see off to the horizon. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Should we go back to the spawn point and go the other way, maybe? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. That's bad timing. That my dad decided to start hoovering. Should I turn down the microphone volume a bit? See if that works. I'll just talk more loudly. <laughs> oh, it's bloody typical. I told him no distractions today. <sighs> so I can't complain, can I? Oh my god, that's so loud. So probably all here. Then again. The chat's dead, so I'm assuming no one's watching anyway. I hope I'll be going for like half an hour knowing him. I don't think this way leads to anything either. No, I'm just going to have to pick one or the other, I think. Oh, wow. I was close. It was actually in Oregon. I guess North Nevada. Wait a... How is Oregon like a massive desert? I thought Oregon was like... You know, when I studied the American West in history, Oregon was where all the settlers went to do like all the, the farming and it was all going to be prosperous. It's a bloody desert. I was close, though. I'm quite happy with that. View summary. So I got about two thirds of maximum points, would have probably got a lot more if, you know, the fourth game hadn't just completely glitched out. Um, yeah, I think if you zoom out, yeah, you can see, obviously there was that one which didn't go too well, assumed it was up in some desolate area like Wyoming or Montana when it was actually in Kentucky. Um, that one was quite close, that one obviously nailed that. Got very close to the one in France, and then that one just glitched out as well. Not a bad game though, I think 15,000 is a very good score to be honest. But yeah, um, I think that would be all for this game. And well, as we say that, we're just about approaching 2 hours into the stream in about 10 minutes time. So after that little break, I think we can probably head back to the coding. So we'll just switch things out a bit. I'm going to need to head to the toilet soon, to be fair. So we'll probably have a bit of a break around the two-hour mark. We'll just get the, the game loaded back up. Yep, one minute fifty in. Hey, we are back in Eclipse. So, I'm probably going to go to the toilet now. I can't need a toilet now, so. Um, let's. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> how do we actually edit these properties, is it? Enter text. Back momentarily. 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 Position. Center. There we go. Lovely. Yeah, I will be back 
momentarily. Oh, bloody typical, the, uh, someone else is in the toilet. Good news is for Hoover stops, so I'm about to be back soon. Um, I just have to wait a bit, I guess. Shall I check Twitter, eh? I honestly don't know if anyone's watching this, yeah. Like viewer list that might give us. Oh, Flinny and William GP11 apparently are lurking about. <laughs> Should have said something, chaps. Sound like a door shutting. Maybe the toilet's available now, let's see. Okay, we're back. Everyone left. <laughs> Probably. Ah, oh, Aiden's back, according to the viewer list. Yes, hello again. I am back. Back for more coding. Now. I'm starting to think I'm maybe going to do that was a bad idea, because now I've kind of lost my flow here with this development, you know. You know what I mean? Like, I sort of left this halfway through, and now I'm just like, what was I even doing? So, well, yeah, it was probably a mistake. But... Let's try and figure things out here. What's the for loop do? So, let's say we've got some random entities, 
like uh, M for more. I'm just going to make a little list here on my paper. Actually, no, I was using paint, wasn't I? So let's try and use that. So this is our ship. Specifically, this is a list of entities that are in the ship. So one of them is a mob, like an NPC. Because we don't have any of these yet, but it's just theoretically. Then we have an airlock, which will have the ID of 1. And maybe another mob. And then an airlock with the ID of 2. And then what we're doing is, on the planet... We are populating our airlocks to lead back into the spaceship so you can actually get back on board. So what we need to do is say, right, this will be airlock 1. Oh, but that airlock 1 might already be linked with another level. And um, let's just say random mob and airlock 2. We we'll want to link with that airlock 1 and that airlock 3 will want to be linked with that airlock 2 because obviously they cycle through these in the same order it goes through each tile in the array going from left to right and then down like you know in that sort of method and so it will find it will find a different airlocks in the same order each time unless your ship is backwards and I'm not, I'm not going to attempt to mess around doing that um, but yeah they won yeah so what we need to do is say what exactly what have we got currently. What we're doing is this is going through the exterior of the ship and it finds an airlock that it needs to create. So this is the actual creation. This is what this is what gets spawned when the ship lands. Land. So a ship lands, these get generated, and we need to link it back to these. So it comes to the first airlock. It says, right, we need to go for all the entities and find the first airlock that hasn't been linked yet. But, see, what might happen is... Um, hold on. Let's let's delete that, because I'm going to come with another example. This is also an airlock. This is go too well. This is airlock zero and this leads to a different part of a ship. Maybe it's like I don't know. Just just for hypothetical reasons, a different part of a ship. We need to we can't just say any airlock and just match up like that because there'll be some airlocks that might not necessarily lead to the outside. So it needs to cycle through, find airlocks that lead to this and then link them up. So that should